morning. This is Tairo Hassan here at uh, Web Summit. Uh, Tayur from uh, Brightline Initiative, and I've been having a nice conversation with uh, the CEO and founder of Boston Dynamics, uh, Mark uh, Revert, and we'll be talking again about how technology is shaping the future and uh, what is bringing also Mark here. Mark, welcome to this uh, discussion here, Thank this you. conversation, and we're very happy like uh, that you're making the time to discuss with us. And uh, we also saw the presentation that you have on stage. Can you help us understand what is bringing you to such a large conference like uh, Web Summit? Well, you know, it's always interesting uh, to see what people think about the robots we're building. Uh, you know, part of it is commercially motivated. We're, we've done, recently launched a, a new robot product called Spot, and so we wanted to uh, see if we could find developers who might uh, build on top of the platform we're creating, and that was one of the motivations. Uh, but it's also just fun to to popularize the work, especially with a, with a wide-ranging audience like this one. Not all roboticists, but you know, all manner of uh, uh, technology developers. Excellent. And of course, as we, we at Brightline, we talk a lot about transformation. How can you transform organization? How can you transform the way we, we work? How can you actually transform today for the future? How do you see robotic helping us at transforming or being a transformative? force in what we're trying to achieve? Well, one thing is that uh, I think it takes time to develop uh, an advanced technology like robotics. You know, it, I don't think it happens overnight. And, you know, we've been working on it for a long time, and that's been an important uh, element, you know, building up people who just really love the work. I think that's the key ingredient. You know, we're there because we love the work. Yeah, we make money. Yeah, we uh, have a product and all that. But I think the biggest drive is that people uh, love to come into work and see what they can make the project do, uh, work with their other teammates, and uh, uh, you know, make something happen that no one's ever seen before. Excellent. And of course, when we talk about uh, robotic, and sometimes people are worried about the collaboration, or let's say, the interface between people and robot, and all these things that are coming together, but what, what do you see is the key challenge or the major challenge that you have when it comes to acceptance, or if it is already accepted, then to scale it up. Yeah, I think I think the key thing is getting people to become familiar with the robots. Uh, you know, just after my talk here, we went outside and had a group of people there, and you could see these people love the robot. They wanted to pose for selfies. They wanted to, some of them wanted to pet the robots. So I think it's people who just see the robots in abstract that might be uh, you know some of them are concerned about it. But I think uh, you know, once you have some contact and uh, know what the robot can do, see some of the value, uh, you know, people become enthusiasts. You know, technology is interesting. Every new technology has opportunity and risk. And uh, I would hate to see the risks interfere with uh, taking advantage of the opportunities. That's the same for cars, airplanes, computers, uh, lasers, you name it. Uh, the technology itself isn't good or bad, it's all about uh, what you can uh, use it for. I think robots offer the possibility of doing a lot of dull, dangerous, and dirty work uh, that really people shouldn't be doing, that they don't want to do, and uh, you know, we're, we're putting a lot of our focus on finding those jobs and uh, putting the robots to work doing them. Great. I'll come then close to home, let's say Boston Dynamics, and I know, of course, we released not long ago what we call a bright line transformation compass. And we often say transformation to succeed need to be people-centered. And of course, in organization, we tend to say that people are the most important asset within the organizations. But our research is shown that not everywhere you see that. People say it, but you don't see people walking the talk. So my question then to you is, how are you within Boston Dynamics putting people at the center of the organization? Well, I would go further. It's not that people are the most important asset. They're the only asset at our company. Uh, you know, we recruit uh, the best talent we can possibly find. We try and make them happy uh, in their jobs or find jobs for them that, you know, that they like doing. Uh, you know, no one should be working. We don't think at our company unless they love what they're doing. And, uh, you know, that, that's how the whole place works. Uh, when, sometimes someone doesn't do so well in their job and we usually try and jiggle things around and find a different spot and see if they work better there. And that, you know, that frequently uh, solves things. 
almost no one leaves our company. We have almost zero attrition rate. Not zero, but almost zero. And I think that's because uh, uh, we work so hard to uh, make it an environment where people are uh, uh, enjoying the work they're doing, where everybody respects each other, uh, they make a good living, and uh, you know, it's a, I think it's a happy place. Excellent. And uh, here, as part of Web Summit, we had a, a wall, let's say, in the exhibition area, and that, on that wall we were asking some questions to attendees. And one of the questions that we were asking was basically about if the vision and the strategy of the organization is crisply articulated. And we were asking people to answer yes or no. And then when I saw the answer, I was just uh, kind of summarizing it. When I saw the answer, some people say yes, some people say no, and it was a bit balanced. And then I saw a huge line in the middle of people that was, it was not yes, it was not no. So just the meaning that they don't have an idea if actually that future, that vision and strategies are clearly articulated. What can you tell us about uh, <laughs> that? Because I find it right interesting yeah. that uh, it was about dividing. Yeah, I probably don't have a good answer to this question. Uh, I know there are some people at our company who think that we're not being clear enough about what we're doing. Uh, I look inside my head and think, boy, it seems pretty clear to me. Uh, sometimes I, I have to admit I get impatient with repeatedly getting asked for more and more clarity. I think part of uh, my personal skill is to move forward when things are uncertain, but find a way to, you know, to keep going, even though there's uncertainty. You know, there's a lot of value in being able to find your way when things aren't defined. So, and you know, when you have more and more people, there's all different types of people. Some, some want a lot of clarity, some are happy to work in the, uh, in, the uh, in between. <laughs> got it, got it. And then I'll close. I, I know, of course, your time yeah, is premium here, is. but I'll close and get one more insight here. Because when you are in an organization, people tend to say, of course, failure is something that people need to embrace. You know, maybe learning from failures and improve it, becoming an experiment. Or maybe you discover different, man different ways of doing the things and the, the way you had thought will work. How do you use, let's say, the notion of agility, accepting to fail and learn? How do you use it in your company? Or do you actually believe into it? Yeah, we, we have a process at our company that we call build it, break it, fix it. And uh, the idea is if when you're, when you're designing something new, you don't want to wait until it's perfect before you start testing it. You want to test it as soon as you can. And when you test it, not everything's going to work. Maybe none of it will work. Uh, maybe it'll mostly work, but the data you get back from trying it and it breaking and then fixing it is a much faster way to work, a much more, I think, uh, effective way to work than trying to get everything perfect from the beginning. So no one ever gets uh, criticized or uh, punished uh, at our company because they tried something and it didn't work the first time uh, or anything like that. We, you know, we really believe in uh, getting out there and giving it a try and, you know, you know, see where it comes. It's fun doing it that way, too. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much for taking thank the time to be with us. Thank we you. really appreciate nice it. Nice talking to you. All the best. Okay? Nice talking to you.